68% of American households have at least one dog as part of their family, and that percentage is even higher when you consider a concentration of those dogs in suburban areas like those that have a lawn that is professionally cared for by a turf management company. So how hard is it to have a healthy lawn and a healthy dog in the same household? So a little backstory in terms of my personal experience. Before I came to work with Picture Perfect in the lawn care industry, I was a vet assistant for several years down in Georgia. As a result, in working with a lot of clients, there were several times where pets came in and owners came in asking questions about how their lawn care was going to affect their dog in terms of whether or not fertilizer products were safe or if my dog eats this mushroom, what's going to happen? Or can I give my dog this supplement so that he stops killing my grass? It's a very normal thing for homeowners to consider and I've continued to hear those questions from the other side of the fence now that I'm working in the lawn care industry. I'm a huge dog person as are all of the people that are part of our team, our family and our team members alike. We all love dogs. So it's a big consideration when we've designed our program and when we talk to our clients about things that are happening in their lawn that could be related to their dog. Dogs are the best, right? They are literally goodness incarnate. You, you can't get a more pure being than a dog. It, they're amazing. So don't try to convince me that there isn't a better pet. It's always going to be dogs. They're basically people, but better. And before we get any further, please comment below and reassure me that you are also a dog person. And if for some reason you're not, please try to justify why. I want to hear from you guys. And I know that 75% of our viewers, by the way, are not subscribers yet, which blows my mind. Why wouldn't you be? So if you're not a subscriber, go ahead and subscribe. And if you're not going to subscribe, please comment and explain to me why. I, I don't get it. I don't get why people don't love dogs and I don't get why you don't subscribe to this channel. So I want to go over with you guys several different ways that your dog can be a problem for your lawn as well as several ways that your lawn can be a problem for your dog. So the first concern that usually comes up for people is the issue of digging and scratching in the yard and that kind of mechanical damage that dogs end up doing to the grass. Digging is purely behavioral and that's why there are some dogs that love it and want to do nothing else and some dogs that have never even thought to try to dig. Some breeds like terriers or hounds might be more inclined to dig either because they smell a mole or they're trying to expand their territory but it's really a toss up whether or not your dog is going to be a digger. Some breeds like terriers and hounds might be more prone to digging either because they're trying to root out a mole or a chipmunk or trying to expand their territory but it's not always predictable it's kind of a toss-up whether or not your pup is gonna be a digger then there's the issue of what some people refer to as burning out where your dog goes to the bathroom and it kicks its back feet this is because that natural instinct that they have from tens of thousands of years ago tells them to bury and cover up their waste the same way that a cat does in a litter box or they're just using it as as an extra method to mark where they've been and they're showing off and trying to be all kinds of frisky. It just depends. They're dogs and we're left to deal with it if we have a dog that does something like that in the grass. The burning out is a little bit more tricky but a lot of times digging is simply the result of boredom. Giving your dog some positive structure and different ways to let out that energy is beneficial not only to their peace of mind but to their interest in digging and tearing up your lawn as well. In mild cases of this mechanical damage, a lot of times the lawn will fill in small bare areas and thicken back up or bounce back and not be an issue. If you've got a larger dog or a dog with a lot of time on its hands that has really done a lot of damage, unfortunately there aren't too many quick and easy options to repair it for a fescue lawn because it doesn't spread laterally. Depending on the time of year, you may have to just wait until fall seeding to fill in those bare areas or if it's a really extreme situation, you may need to consider getting some topsoil to fill in and regrade that hole and then seed or sod over the top. 
On the subject of that mechanical wear and tear, more common than digging and kind of a more long-term process is the paths that you'll oftentimes see leading from the deck stairs or the back door over to that corner of the fence where Rufus lives, over to the tree where that mean squirrel always hangs out and then back to the stairs. Dogs have a routine when they police their backyard because it's their territory, checking on different things and they kind of go through the same cycle. So a lot of times you'll see these bare patches where the grass has just been beaten down several times a day as a result of that paw traffic. Again, unfortunately, there's not really much that you can do in this regard. I've got a lot of clients who have tried to install a walkway or some sort of stone pathway or even a mulch bed just to have it not be bare dirt in the middle of grass that makes it clear where the dog has been going. And then, go figure, Fido doesn't want to go on the stone pathway. He likes the feel of the grass. So now there's a dirt path worn in the grass right along next to that walkway and it defeats the purpose. Depending on your dog and depending on your lawn, it's just kind of a deal with it and see what happens situation. But at least for most people, it's the backyard and not the front. The other kind of damage that your dog does to your lawn isn't behavioral and isn't mechanical, it's chemical and it's nature. I love seeing this in people's yards when I first meet with them to discuss starting services because a lot of the time they have no idea why it's been happening. As you can see in this video, the rest of the lawn is pretty thin, maybe some weeds, pale, not growing very quickly, and then there's this huge patch of crazy thick, dark green, fast growing fescue that stands a foot taller than the rest of the lawn. And here is the little rascal who is responsible. Believe it or not, your dog is basically a poorly trained fertilization technician. Every time that they go out to go potty, they are putting down material that is very common in most fertilizers. Urine is strong in a compound called urea that is very high in nitrogen. It's one of your body's most efficient ways of getting rid of waste nitrogen, which is the whole point, and it's a really good natural thing for any animal, person, dog, otherwise to be doing power to the kidneys, right? Urea is actually a very, very common source of nitrogen that is built into fertilizers that you can buy over the shelf and are used by a lot of professionals. If I have a urea-based fertilizer and I go out to your property and accidentally spill some and apply it too heavily to your lawn, odds are it's going to kill that grass. It's what professionals refer to as burning the lawn. And it's the same thing that's happening when your grass dies in a spot where your dog went potty. That concentration of urea is going to fry the grass at first, but the surrounding turf, as well as the turf that either fills in or comes up in that spot later, is going to be super healthy because it's getting a really high dose of nitrogen. And that's what makes your grass green and that's what makes your grass grow. Other aspects of urine, such as high salt concentration or the acidic pH of it, can be a factor in what is killing off the grass where your dog goes to the bathroom, but this urea is the main component. Unfortunately, you can't make your dog stop going potty. Some dog owners have been successful in teaching their pooch to go to the bathroom in the natural area or in a designated mulch bed. They even have like the little fire hydrant ornament that tells the dog this is where you go. It's hit or miss. It depends on your dog, how well they're able to be trained, how excited and eager they are to do that, or on the flip side, how lazy they are, especially in the winter when they don't want to have to go all the way to the back of the yard. If it's something that you're concerned about, the best way to reduce the impact of your dog's urine is to try to water that section of the grass regularly so that it dilutes it a little bit and pushes it out of the soil system a little bit more quickly. Again, this can kind of create some of its own problems because you don't want to oversaturate your lawn, so you just kind of have to play with it and figure out what the best method is going to be for you. You know what they say about opinions, everybody's got one, but from my personal experience, I don't like to recommend the over-the-counter supplement that you can buy that are supposed to prevent your dog's urine from turning the lawn brown. These dietary supplements usually market the idea of neutralizing the pH of your dog's urine. While I've heard mixed results on the success of how well this works for your lawn, I don't like the increased risk that it can have to your dog for urinary issues such as bladder stones, urinary tract infections, and some other things. Kidneys and the systems that come with them are very sensitive and it's just not worth rocking the boat on your dog's health to try to keep your grass green. I love a green lawn, don't get me wrong, I'm all about it, but your dog is family. 
Now, there are clearly ways that your pupper is not the best friend of your lawn, but your lawn isn't completely without fault either. As you know from what we've talked about in outdoor pest control, mosquitoes, fleas, and ticks are very active and aggressive in RVA lawns across the scale. And the same way that these pests can carry diseases for people, they can carry diseases for your pets as well. Mosquitoes are what transmit heartworms, which can be a deadly issue for your dog. Heartworms are very affordable and easy to prevent, but they are very difficult and expensive to treat. And if left untreated, can be deadly. So it's not something that you wanna play with. Get your dog on heartworm prevention if you haven't already. There's no reason not to. If you're a dog owner, it's part of your responsibility. Where fleas and ticks are concerned, ingesting a flea is how your dog ends up with tapeworms. And getting bit by a tick is how your dog can contract things like Lyme disease and even Rocky Mountain spotted fever, the same way that people can contract it. Throughout the year, you always wanna have your dog on at least heartworm preventative, but sometimes flea and tick control can get a little expensive. There are a lot of options out there, but it's worth considering getting your lawn treated for mosquitoes, fleas, and ticks, just so that A, it's easier on your family, and B, it's easier on your pet because they're not being exposed nearly as much in the first place. Outdoor pests are pretty easy to predict and control in terms of treatments like that, but the other threat to your dog from the lawn isn't so easy to control and that's allergies. The environmental allergies that your dog experiences are expressed differently than they are in people. Most of the time, these allergies express themselves in the form of canine atopic dermatitis, which is basically a skin reaction as opposed to getting the sniffles. Grass is a very common culprit when we see atopic dermatitis in dogs. It causes rashes, blisters, infections, and is most often seen in the paws, on the tummy, or even in the ears. Smaller breeds can be more susceptible to this because they're closer to the ground, but I've seen multiple pet owners that have to literally wipe their dog's belly and its paws every time that it comes in from outside during the spring and summer and even fall because it just has such a strong reaction to that grass. Like heartworm preventative, this is something that you need to talk to your vet about. If you see any kind of skin reaction on your dog that could be allergy related, there are multiple different options to control those allergies just like there are with people. Finally, where lawn treatments are concerned, the question I hear often is, is this safe for my dog? At Picture Perfect, the strong majority of the fertilizer that we're using is organic and carbon-based. As a result, those treatments are not going to be hazardous to your pet. The only issue that we've ever heard from any of our clients isn't health-related, but behavioral-related. A lot of our fertilizer products have kind of a barnyard smell based on where they are coming from. So dogs think that that's like cologne or perfume in the lawn and they will roll in it and all of a sudden they smell like the fertilizer. Doesn't happen often but it happens enough that I always let people know ahead of time just so that they're not surprised. Weed control is the only thing that really needs a resting period before it's safe for kids and pets to go out into the yard. And that's usually just until it dries, so two or three hours. And we always write on your leave behind brochure what time the application of any liquid products like that were done so that you know exactly what time it'll be safe to return to the lawn. So that about covers it. I appreciate you watching my clickbait with dogs. <laughs> if you have any questions about anything to do with your lawn, your dog, or anything else that you're curious about, be sure to hit me up in the comment section below. Tell me about your dog. Of course I wanna know about your dog. Let me know if you've ever had any issues between your dog and your lawn, or if you just wanna tell me about your dog, because who doesn't wanna talk about their dog? Be sure, if you didn't for some reason earlier in the video, to go ahead and subscribe, and stay posted for the videos that we have coming up next week. Pretty soon I'm gonna be talking to you about how to cut the grass, so watch for that, because I've already gotten a lot of questions about sharpening blades, mowing height, and how to get those amazing picture-perfect stripes that everybody is so hot for. I appreciate you guys watching. I hope you have a picture-perfect day, and we'll talk to you again soon.